Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved on God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Philippians chapter 2. If there be therefore any consolation, consolation is, find my notes here, comfort or hope or joy in Christ. If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, capital F, if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy, Paul's joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. You know what pleased me, guys, Paul's saying? Be unity in the belief of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel and the word. Don't have different Bibles. Don't have different doctrines. Be the same. Love each other. From the lowest to the highest person in the church, no matter what. Be friends. Let nothing be done through strife. Don't be angry in the church. Or vainglory, trying to seek uh, fame and, and honor and worship. But in loneliness of mind, meekness, humbleness. Let each esteem other. Let each esteem other. Better than themselves. If there's, if there's going to be a praise of somebody in the church, let someone praise that person. Let not that person praise himself. Well, we're kind of far away from what the church is today. Everybody lifting themselves up. You got these ministries, and like I said, I was in the hospital, I had the TV. All these ministries have the person's name who's in charge of it. Well, there's. Acts 4.12 said there's only one name given amongst men. Everybody wants wants to wants to be recognized. They want awards. They want doodads. They want buttons. They want bubble gum. They want... No. Treat everybody the same. Treat everybody right. And if they're sicker among you, help them. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Don't be selfish. If there's a need in a church, help them. If there's someone down, lift them up. Someone who, you know, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about others. We're supposed to be a family above all families in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be children of God, brothers and sisters together. And look how we act towards each other. We've got cliques in the churches. Well, you know what? You're going to be judged. You're going to be found at fault. I'm sorry. Let this mind, you okay? He said in verse 2, he ended with one mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, here's a right mind. Here is the very mind that Jesus Christ has, that Paul says you can have. You can do right. You can achieve holiness. When, excuse me, who, being in the form of God, through, though it, yeah, though it not robbery to be equal with God, that we're going to look at Christ as a human. We're humans. But made himself of no reputation. And you, you, you would think, you know, what is that? Man, he, he had people angry with him. He had people who loved him. He had people who respected him. He had people who denied him. But he didn't do that himself. 
his character of God to attributes. He did not do it for the fame or the glory or for the, uh, the tribulations. It just came to him by who he was. And that ought to be with us. The Bible says all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Our suffering should be not because we do it purposely, but because of the word. Because the world hates Jesus. They ought to look at us as weird and odd because, you know what? We're above the world. For himself made of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant. Not a, just a man, a servant. And that's what you see Mark's gospel all about. The servant Jesus Christ. He, he took the disciples and washed their feet. He got Peter all upset. He took upon leprosy. He took upon devils. He took upon blind. He took upon death. Maim. Lunatics. And he helped them. We got today, we got doctors who sit on the threshold, you know, they're higher and mighty because they got the degrees and they can do anything. Well, listen, Jesus Christ healed more than what, what those doctors have healed. Jesus Christ has done more than the physicians of the world today. And you know what? He got the title of servant. Jesus never had Dr. Jesus or Jesus uh, PhD, never. And was made in the likeness of man. Well, how do you like that? He looked like a man. Jewish man, the Bible says. And being found in fashion as a man, hair, eyes, legs, digits, toes, and fingers, belly button, he humbled himself. So see, he didn't raise himself up. He didn't do what he did. So look at who I am. There was just people who, who looked at Jesus with respect because they loved him. Because they loved God. And became obedient unto death. Well, obedient to what? For God. In that garden, that cup. God said, you've got to take that sin. You've got to be that sacrificial lamb. Nevertheless, not thy will, I mean, not my will, but thy will be done. I'll go to the grave. Even the death of the cross. Suffrage again. Now remember, chapter 1 was all about suffering. And all in all, Paul finished, hey, suffering. Paul continues on chapter 2. He says, listen, be like-minded, be unity, be together, be the mind of Christ. Oh, by the way, remember Jesus Christ, man. The human part of man himself. 100% man, 100% God, that man part of Jesus Christ, guess what? He suffered. And he suffered more than any man would ever suffer. Wherefore God also has highly, highly exalted him, Jesus. So there is only one exalted in God's eyes. And it's not your pastor. It's not the president. It's Jesus Christ. And giving him a name which is above every name. Acts. Oh man. 4. It was now, 424. Let me forget that word. So there is no other important name of all important names ever to be named. And yet Paul tells us in Corinthians that that name is. There are another Jesuses out there who try to imitate who he is. There are another Christ out there, Antichrist, who try to imitate who he is. And they do get followers into the lake of fire, which burns forever. And yet here is one God exalted. So, I'm saved. Alright, is the Jesus you're saved by, does God exalt that Jesus? Is that the name that's above all names? That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Romans 14, 11. Isaiah 45, 23. Revelation 5, 13. Every single human being is going to bow down before Jesus Christ. Now, I've known a couple of men in my lifetime who, who lost their legs. A couple of them from, uh, from Vietnam. 
One of the guys, I don't really know where you are. Okay, one guy, one of the guys I know he's saved, but we even read this at the judgment seat of Christ about Christians. We're going to bow the knee before Jesus Christ, even as Christians. And here, every lost man is going to bow the knee. You may not have a knee right now. You will get a knee, you will get a body, and you will bow down, save the lost before Jesus Christ, and profess him to be Jesus' Savior. And you're going to find a lot of people that, they're going to have to stand before Jesus Christ with, how come your name was so more important than my name? How come people were allowed to worship you? Listen, Paul says in, in Corinthians, I forget which chapter, some say, I'm a Paul, I'm a Silas. And Paul says, put a stop to that, you babies. It's all about Jesus. So realize, every human is going to get a body and is going to kneel down before Jesus Christ and profess, saved or lost. Now, I've got a message I'm working on right now, and I'm really making sure before I do it. People say Satan is going to fall down before Satan, before Jesus. From what I've studied so far, I don't think so. I'm still working on that. I'm still looking at scripture before I even say anything like that. But I know every human will. Saved or lost. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Alright, every tongue. Saved or lost. A man is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Jesus will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Go jump into the lake. And as they're going to be jumped off the lake before that, that, that time happened, they're going to say, Jesus is Lord. And then somehow, either they already got their sentence, or they didn't get their sentence, and then they hear it. But they will pronounce Imagine an atheist saying Jesus Christ is Lord. Imagine a Jehovah Witness saying Jesus Christ is Lord. Imagine someone who follows Mary and says Jesus is Lord. Now why? Why? To the glory of God the Father. You want to make God happy? You profess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There are lost people, definitely. And there are saved people who do not follow Jesus Christ and do not consider him Lord. And you're going to confess at either judgment that he is Lord. So let him be your Lord now. And let it be easy for a saved person to judgment seat of Christ to walk up to Christ. And whether before our works are burned or put to the fire or after our works have been tested by the fire and we're handed to Christ. At what point? I don't know. But let's just be with our full tongue as we live today. Jesus, you are the Lord. By, because that's what we live. That's what we believe. Not be, because, oh, finally i got to admit that you're my Lord. There's a big difference in saying something. You, know, you can say it with love and care. Hey, that's what I live. You have to say it. It's a big difference. Wherefore, my beloved, and he's talking to the Philippians, he really cares about them. As ye have always obeyed, that's a, just take that part of that verse right there and set it by itself. That's a remarkable statement. Do you realize the first two men ever, the first two humans, never obeyed God? And we are in the mess we are in today because they did not obey, do not eat that fruit. And yet, here's a church written to the saints, written to the to the pastors, written to the deacons. That, hey, you've obeyed. That's a remarkable statement. And that's by Paul. That is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Say, put that in Philippians. That listen, didn't Jesus say that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away? And if that's true, this statement of the Philippians is going to last for all eternity. Like those seven churches in Revelation. Remember, Paul writes the seven churches. John writes the seven churches. That testimony of the churches will stand for all eternity. The Philippians, you know what? You obeyed. I don't think God's ever going to say that about me. because I, I haven't obeyed. I disobeyed. I've rebelled many. Not as in my presence only. So you guys didn't do it with this eyes there. All right, Paul's here. Let's put on a show. You know, you ever work in, ever work in a store 
the, or ever work in a business, the owners are coming, or the high the high CEOs are coming, the, the management's coming. Everyone clean this place up, get it nice and spick and fit, make it look great. Everybody do right. Because the important people are coming. And yet Paul says, you guys have obeyed even when I'm not there. But now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trouble. And that verse is misapplied. It's saying, don't do your salvation with eye service. Don't wait for Jesus Christ to come. Live your life fearing God. Live your life to the salvation that God has set to you, what the Bible says. And you're going to sin fear and trouble that you're going to be caught sinning. Rapture's coming one of these days. It, the rapture may happen when you're living. What are you going to be doing if you're living and the rapture happens? You better be afraid. You better be not sinning when the Lord comes. What about that moment you die? What if you die in a sin? Well, if you died in a sin, you can't apply 1 John 1, 9 because you just died. So that sin already will be accounted to you at the judgment seat of Christ as lost. Live right. That's what he's saying. For it is God which worketh in you. Now, let me ask you a question. For it is God which worketh in you. Who dwells inside you? Holy the Holy Spirit. So what did Paul just say there? The Holy Spirit's God and God's the Holy Spirit. How do they like that? That Holy Spirit that dwells in you is God. And everything that you do good, it's not you. It's God. Everything that you do right and proper, it's not you. It's the Holy Spirit. How about that? There are some people already again talking about this chapter, vain glory and all. They say, look at what I done. Some people go to church think they're doing God, Jesus Christ, a service. Oh, Jesus, aren't you happy I'm here today? Nonsense. Both to will, the will of God. And to do of his good pleasure, 1 Thessalonians 2.13. God wants you to do good, and God gives you the ability to do good. So don't come up and say you can't do it, because then you're calling God a liar. Is that what that verse says? It says God worketh in you to what? To will. And to do his good pleasure. So if you fail, it's not God's fault. It's your fault. You didn't give heed to God. <coughs> Excuse me. Do all things without murmurings and disputing. You want a perfect illustration of that? Go back and read the, the wilderness journey of Israel. We ain't got no water. We ain't got no food. We ain't got no water. We ain't got no food. Going back to Egypt. Why don't you bring us out here? Blah, 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 blah. Don't do it. But we do it. Imagine Paul writing that verse right after say. We can work the good and good pleasure that he puts in there. Oh, yeah. You think you're doing good? What about that murmuring and disputing you're doing? You're a sinner. That ye may be blameless and harmless. So murmuring and disputing makes you blame and puts harm in your life. The sons of God. We are the family of God. We are the children of God. We ought not to be acting like the world. Without rebuke. There should be that there should be in the church no message about the preacher preaching to the people about murmur and disputing. It should not happen. And yet it's a message needed. Because it happens. In the midst of a crooked and per, per, perverse nation. There's America right there. There's Russia. There's Africa. There's Asia. There's the Americas. We are in a perverse nation today. Paul was in a perverse nation. Oh, things are so wicked. Things are so bad. No, they've always been that bad. You just got more information on the internet and the news of what's going on. Perverse nation. Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. You're supposed to be a lighthouse. You're supposed to be a candle in the dark. You know what lit up that the holy place? A candlestick. What did it light up? The bread of God. The prayer of God. Be a light. Holding forth the word of light. Well, there's the bread. We're in the holy place. Now it's a light and the bread. 
Six and six rolls. What's that? That's 66. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ. Again, the, ju the judgment seat of Christ when he comes for his church. Paul says, listen, the judgment seat of Christ, when I see you guys approach Christ, I want to rejoice. And I've, I've got to wonder too, because you know what? I don't know if we're going to know each other in heaven. Paul seems to lean here. He's going to know who the Philippians are. I, I can't put it down 100%. We're going to know each other. But he says, in the day of Christ, I want to rejoice. Well, how can he rejoice in people who he doesn't know who they are? Now, I don't know. That I have not run in vain. Neither labor in vain. Listen, guys. When it comes to the judgment seat of Christ, Christ, I want you to get rewards. I want you to get crowns. I want you to get inheritance. And when you do that, guess what? My ministry was not nothing. It proved to be something. By you guys doing right, I've done right. Listen, the, the, the Corinth church, again, they were babes in Christ. They would have been losers had the rapture happened before Paul wrote 1 Corinthians. And Paul would be looking at them in the judgment seat of Christ, if possible, knowing who they are. Oh, man, I can't believe that. How many of those guys didn't get nothing? All that work I did for that church. Nothing? He's like, do it. Do it. A preacher should be with his flock over his sheep saying, guys, let's get rewards. Let's get crowns. Let's get... Let's get uh, gold, silver, precious stone because for this work of this ministry that it be not vain that we all be approved of God in work and service. Again, that's not happening. Yea, and if I be offered unto the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. I mean, it's a sacrifice by Paul. Paul's putting time and effort into his ministry of starting churches and growing them. For the, the, uh, for the same cause, also do I joy and rejoice with me. So listen, it's supposed to be a rejoicing mo moment serving the Lord. Even Paul who's in jail. Even the Philippians who are, who are being persecuted. It's supposed to be joyful. He writes to the Thessalonians, the worst church that's, that's persecuted said, rejoice evermore. That's hard to do. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send to Moses, now we're going to get into Timothy real quick, shortly unto you, that I may also be of good comfort when I know your state. I'm going to send Timothy unto you. He's going to, he's going to help you guys. And he's going to tell me how you guys are doing. He's going to bring a report. He's coming. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for for your state. There is somebody that is above all. Timothy is worth me sending to you guys. Timothy is well approved in the ministry. Says a lot about Timothy. The young preacher. Uh, for ye, for all seek their own. Not the things which are Jesus Christ. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. That's selfishness. That's getting it for your own self. That's thinking of yourself. But ye know the proof of him, Timothy, that as a son with a father, he served with me in the gospel. Timothy's not selfish. He's been laboring in the gospel. He's been by my side through thick and thin, he has learned, he is able, I am sending him out. And he sends him out to the Corinthian church, the church that's all messed up. Much to study about Timothy. 1 Timothy 1, 2. Him, therefore, Timothy, I hope to send presently, right now. So soon as I shall see how it will go with me. I mean, is he looking at a possible release in prison? Is he going to be moved? Something's going on in Paul's life right now in prison. He's like, he wants to go see the Philippians too, he wrote. 
but I trust in the Lord that I also myself shall come shortly. Right, I'm going to send Timothy, but I hope to go there too. I want to see you guys. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you Ephodiatus. I tried to do that name today. So here's another gentleman that Paul wants to send in the ministry. Approved of Paul. My brother in the Lord and companion in labor. So this guy is a worker in the ministry. And fellow soldier. He's got his armor on. He's dressed in the armor of God. But your messenger and he that ministered to my wants. For he longed after you all and was full of heaviness because that he had heard that he had been sick. Well, he's a guy who's sick. And for indeed he was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him. Who healed him? Did Paul heal Aphrodite? Well, see, the healing ministry is gone. God had to do it. Paul couldn't do nothing. He was sick to death. He, uh, oh, what's that word? Uh, terminal. He's going to die. Paul could do nothing for him. God had to do it for him. But God had mercy on him. And not on him only, but on me also. Least I should have sorrow upon sorrow. He's saying, listen, I'm already in sorrow. I'm in sadness. Had this guy died, oh, man, it would have been an even heavier burden. But God showed us both mercy by giving him longer life and me. I don't have to mourn his death. I sent him, therefore, the more carefully, whatever we carefully, because of his sickness or because of the situation, that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Let's see. All right, he's getting better. I've got to be careful with him. He's not full strength, I think. I think, be careful, but he's going to come to you, and you know what? He's going to be a great blessing to you guys, and it's going to be a great blessing to me that he's going to be there with you. You see the love? You see the care? Receive him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness, and hold sure in reputation because of the work of Christ. He was nigh unto death. Not regarding his life to supply your lack of service towards me. This guy is dying and he's still serving the Lord. And still trying to take care of Paul and the Philippians. Even in his dying. And it says he was dying. He was not selfish. And he was living for God and helping Paul. That if he were to die it would set Paul into sorrow. So the main thing in this chapter is you got to have unity. And you can't think of yourself. And there's one above all, above all, to be above all. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ.